Welcome to the Assessment Property Tax and Land Records webinar series. Today, our topic for the discussion is optimizing field operations with ArcGIS. I'm Brent Jones, part of the Land Records team here at Esri, and I'll be your host. We also have presenting with us today, Will Myers, who is a key solution engineer on the team. Throughout the webinar today, if you have a question, feel free to submit it through the GoToWebinar window. We'll do our best to address your questions during the presentation and at the end. I'll be pasting in relevant, relevant links in the window throughout the presentation, so if you have anything you want to bring up, it would be a good time to do it. Here's a quick look at the agenda for today's webinar. I'll begin with a quick overview of the ArcGIS solution for assessment, property, tax, and land records. And then Will will give us an overview of the components of field operations. We'll then spend most of the time doing demos and showing you examples of how to configure the solution components to meet your particular and unique needs. We know many of you have seen components of the Esri field solution before, but there are many new capabilities, and we'll focus on optimization so you can show ROI. ArcGIS has many capabilities from comprehensive spatial analysis, advanced cartography, data sharing, publication, web mapping, and many more. To put these capabilities into specific context for your work, we've developed configurable apps and maps that are relevant and useful to assessors. We've focused on three key areas in the assessor's office where GIS delivers extreme value, public engagement, value analysis, and parcel management. A couple of things I'd like to mention before I pass this over to Will. Please join our meetups if you haven't already. We have one for land records and one for assessors and GIS. The land records meetup focuses on parcels and recorder integration. The assessor and GIS meetup focuses on spatial analysis, dashboards, insights, mapping, and visualization for assessors. We've got a few planned on getting ready for the new Parcel Fabric in Pro, so sign up if you, if you haven't already and you'll receive notifications. We also have a face-to-face -face meetup at the user conference in July, uh, and we hope to see you there. For those that have attended in the past, you can see the picture there. It's a pretty cramped room, but we, uh, uh, we, have, we have a new room this year, so we have a, a large room, so we're quite happy about that. Mark your calendars. Our next webinar will be on public engagement on May 16th at the same time as this webinar. Remember to sign up even if you can't attend and we'll get a recording of the webinar to you. You can see the, uh, the URL on the bottom of the page and I'll, I'll paste that in the window. All right, and now over to you, Will. All right, so many of you guys know that um, old fashioned methods are are complicated, right? So when I first started um, out of college, I was doing field work and I had what I called my trifecta field tools. I had my clipboard, I had my GPS, and I had my digital camera. And I used it to fill out paper forms and then mark out where I was. Um, and then I'd spend a ton of time in the back office doing a lot of data entry. And not only just me data entry, but data entry for across my entire team. And at the end of the day, we might know what we did yesterday. Um, and it required a lot of extra time. And oftentimes, it was um, mistakes were very mistake prone from either poor handwriting or poor ability to read those people's handwriting. So the purpose of having a mobile strategy is to have an improved field data collection. It's to increase the quality of the data, but also provide a better return on investment of your time in the field, right? We know that field work's expensive, so we wanna make sure that we're getting the best data we can when we go to the field. And we know that your work, your field crews are in the field every day. And there you have the, 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 the commercial technology that they're used to, but they really don't have necessarily the technology that they need to do the work every day with your authoritative information. So with the mobile strategy, we can have and work efficiently, capture the right data and information, and do it all with one device. With the mobile strategy, workers in the back office can see and report and track work being done. 
and reassign and prioritize as new things come up. So I want to spend some time today with you to introduce um, some configurable apps that Esri has for the field and really focus on some new technology that you may or may not have seen before or also may have not have thought of it, that could be used and to support your office and business needs. So some common use cases, right? Um, not beyond land records. Um, you can see here, we have users doing all sorts of things with our um, technology, whether it's sign inventory, um, or street light inventories, meter inspections, collecting ground control points for drones, um, or doing parcel mapping and you know, really, um, and damage assessments in the field. So at Esri, we see our mobile field apps in our in our in the in the field in a circular pattern, and field in field work in general, and field operations in a circular pattern. And we look at it as a continuous business process where you plan, coordinate, navigate capture and monitor data. And then that cycle continues, right? But you may not necessarily plan as much on the front end every single time. So we have tools to help you put these things together. When we plan our work, we want to use tools like ArcGIS Desktop or maybe a web app to help us do analysis to say, and understand what areas do we need to prioritize to get the most return on investment for our time in the field. Then we coordinate our work with Workforce for ArcGIS. Workforce for ArcGIS is a two-way dispatch and field app to, to assign tasks to users in the field. It allows the back office to communicate directly to the field worker and work as a team to get assignments done more quickly. It also gives the power of prioritization to the user in the field so they can see what they need to get done and accomplish it in a list-based manner. Navigator for ArcGIS is one of my favorite apps. It allows for custom turn-by-turn -turn navigation using your authoritative content, but also allows for offline navigation in areas where you may not have cellular service or navigating to areas that may not necessarily have a current address. We can app link, we can use app link APIs, which I will demonstrate, to send multiple stops to the field worker and also using your own maps embed your own data to find and discover things in the field without all completely offline. Many of you are familiar with Collector for ArcGIS. It is our most popular mobile app with over 1 million downloads. It is a map-centric data collection that supports high precision and it's available on three platforms, Android, iOS, and Windows. And today I'm gonna demonstrate some of the new features of the recent release, the most recent release on iOS. This is a brand new version of Collector. It has enhanced capabilities and is currently in beta on Android with Windows being released later this year. Survey123 is a smart form field app that allows for offline and online data collection with enhanced technology to make your data collection processes better in the field. It is a very flexible app that runs on all three platforms. Um, and also in a web browser to allow your field staff um, to quickly capture data that they used maybe previously captured on a form, traditional paper-based form workflow. And finally, 
operations dashboard really gives us the power to see and visualize that data collection in real time. So as that data is being collected, we can see what's going on. We can understand with graphs, charts, um, lists, and indicators what's being done. And it's a very simple to build web application that can be put together rapidly to support different business needs. So as you can see, we have a complete workflow for field operations. By linking these apps together, we can enhance our field operation workflows to get better results in the field. But we also see that there's other things that workers need in the field. And so we have apps like Explorer for ArcGIS, which um, I'm happy to announce um, is now going to be available shortly for Windows. So those users that are using Windows 10 can take disconnected maps and online maps into the field and mark them up. And also drone for map for ArcGIS, um, a image capture tool to allow for the creation of 2D and 3D products um, in the field or inspection workflows um, for the, with the use of UAS and drones. So the workflows that we see are really enhanced by pairing these apps together. And while these apps are all powerful on their own, when powered together, it really makes decision-making processes really powerful. So we see trends like putting together collector and survey one, two, three to report into a common operations dashboard. So those results from the field can be viewed in the back office in near real time. We also see workforce being used as the launch pad for survey one, two, three, navigator and collector. And then being the tool to be used to capture all of that key work information. We also see users both using maps and forms to collect data, but also going from Explorer to Survey123 to populate data with attribute information. And then we see a common trend of using the powerful capabilities of ArcGIS Pro to build these mobile map packages for offline data use and build really pretty maps that can be used in the field really effectively. And then finally, we see third-party integrations of our technology where we can link a custom app to ArcGIS mobile technology to be the last mile of a, a workflow from a custom app. So some of you might be wondering, well, what do I need to get started with this? And really, with the ArcGIS user types that were introduced in the last year, we can pair the apps to meet the user capabilities with the identity of your users to give them the tools they need to do their work. And you can see with a field worker user, they have all of those field apps bundled together and the ArcGIS Essentials apps to do the work they need in the field at a reduced cost from a creator user. So with that, let's start touring the apps. So we're going to start with the field operations homepage at the Esri website. So I think this is a great resource as a starting point for where you're going to go with field operations. It has all of the same content that I just presented in an easy to read web page that talks about planning, navigating, understanding your work, capturing your work, monitoring, and sharing your work. And all of these workflows get started when you start with the planning process. 
So many of you might be familiar with geocoding and address. Well, we can take our parcel data from our land record system and build an address locator off of it so that when passed with a parcel ID number, in this case, a strap number from the state of Florida, I can visualize where the output of my business system, where I need to send my real field crews. And then I can use tools in ArcGIS Online to start planning routes to see where they're going to go. But I can also use Workforce. So I showed Workforce in the PowerPoint, and I'm going to kind of run through a quick project to so see how we get started with Workforce. So Workforce for ArcGIS is accessible both in ArcGIS Online and ArcGIS Enterprise. With ArcGIS Enterprise, you have to install the Workforce components, but once installed, the, the processes are very similar. So I go to Workforce for ArcGIS.com and I create a project. I've already started a project here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and open it. So as you can see, my project is empty. I have no assignments and I have no workers. So we need to go back and configure the project. So when you do the project configuration, the first thing that you're asked is adding assignment types. So some of the assignment types that you might um, add, right, are maybe an inspection, right, or a commercial review, or new construction. site visit, or maybe you need to do appeal review, right? So a workforce project can be used for long-term workflows, but it also can be used for short-term projects. You might have some field crews in the field doing a um, photo collection project, and you just want to see and assign them places to go. But it could also be used for long durations. So as a dispatcher, the next thing I need to do is add mobile users. So I'm gonna select a user, I'm gonna select myself, and I'm already a dispatcher, but I need to be a mobile worker to actually start doing work in the field. If I was adding a lot of users, I could add them from a group or from a file to make this process a little bit easier. So I'm going to add Brent, make him a mobile worker. And then he also has a second persona in this, in this org. So I'm going to add him as well. So you can see I have mobile workers, right? And then I might also add Amy. make them a mobile worker, and so on and so forth. I then can go in and add details to my mobile worker, like maybe give them a, number, a contact number or um, All right, so apparently I'm really good with angry dogs. So I can save that. I could also put in maybe what their specialty was, um, if they had any um, issues. Um, so I can also add more dispatchers. So if I need to add another person as a dispatcher, I can, right? So I can add, same way I add mobile users, I can add them as dispatchers. So maybe I'll make Brent a dispatcher as well. And then finally, I can 
go in the advanced settings and configure the integration with some of our other apps. By default, we integrate completely with Navigator, but maybe I want to add an integration for Explorer, right? And filter the map I wanted to use. So I could say, hey, when you open this map, you can look at the appeals. But also for collector, I can set a link. And then I can also pass field information to collector. So I could pass data once and have it show up in the field. So once all of this is done, I can go back to overview and launch my project. So you can see there is no assignments and currently I have no workers with locations, but we'll make that change real quick. So I'm going to create an assignment down here in Florida and I'm going to go in and say, hey, we need to do a commercial review. I'm just going to click on the map for ease of use. I'm going to set a priority to high, but I also can make it critical, right? So I need it done ASAP. And with critical things, they should be done. And it's 224 Eastern time here. So I'm going to say it needs to be done by 3 p.m. I can put an ID number in. I can put a description in. Review. business and I can add attachments like a photo or maybe I want to give a field um, checklist to that user in a PDF and have it attached so that when they get out there they can do their work. So I'm going to create the assignment and you can see I did not assign it to someone so I'm going to assign it to myself. So you might be wondering What does that look like for the user? Okay, so now I see my iPad, right? So you see some things that are starting to show up. One, you see my blue dot. I'm currently in our Esri Charlotte office. You see this work. It's currently in Jacksonville. In the list of things to do, I have a critical priority assignment and I am 333 miles away, all right? So I can click on the assignment. I can launch into other apps like Navigator, Collector. Because I picked Commercial Review, I filtered those out to make it easier for my business processes. I can acknowledge the work. I can add notes. So I've started my work process by acknowledging the work. So I'm going to go back to my dashboard. You can see now that I'm working. The work has been acknowledged. My workers, you can see I'm the only one working today. I can zoom out and see myself up here. Right, so I could see where all my workers were, and I can see the current assignments. So, going back to workforce, I will start work, but maybe while I'm working on it, I want to pause and maybe I need to go on break. So, I can go on break. Back in the office, they can see now that in a second, you'll see I'm now on break, right, in the list. If I 
go back in and go back to working in a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds it will refresh in my dash over here in my worker list and you'll see that i'm back at working my assignment i can resume it i can put notes in so i can type or i could use siri to link notes so mean dog in yard and i could take a picture add an attachment process my work right finish so now my list is empty and in the back office that work item i can see that there was a note that there's a mean dog in the yard and if i filter on status to completed I can see there's my completed work. If I clear my filter and just say unassigned, I now have no assignments. So workforce for ArcGIS can be utilized to manage field work, have workers in the right place at the right time, get them directions to where they're going, and visualize that allies this through an easy mobile app and an easy two-way web dispatcher. It can also be extended, right? It can be extended with our tools um, for Python in the Python API for ArcGIS to batch import workers, create assignments, and to make it easier, we have sample notebooks that were used last year for an envisioning workshop. And we have an entire workflow to capture and process all of this information. So we've seen workforce. Now I wanna show Navigator. So I'm gonna go back to my iPad and show Navigator. So this is Navigator for ArcGIS um, using custom data, so I've embedded both the parcels and the locator service for parcel data. And I can search for parcels by putting in a strap number. I've done one recently, so um, I'm not gonna use it, but I will put in, um, and you can see I start getting suggestions as I type. So I can put that in. I could get turn-by-turn -turn navigation to that location, but I think more importantly, what if I have a list, right? So I'm gonna to go to my notes. And I'm gonna launch a URL that was sent to me in email. So what this URL is doing is saying, okay, Navigator, here's my starting point. This happens to be the property appraiser's office for Duval County, Jacksonville, in Jacksonville, Florida. And I need to, you to route me to multiple stops. So right here, you can see I have uh, roughly 48 stops, all using parcel numbers to locate where I need to go. So I can hit start navigation and it's going to give me turn by turn turn by turn directions. So let's try that out. So you see I get a safety warning. I'll hit accept. And in 22 minutes, we will make it to our first destination. So we're just gonna sit here for the next 22 minutes and listen to Navigator get us there. I'm just kidding, we don't have time for that, so. But you can see how using Navigator 
can help prioritize the work that's being done. This locator was built with ArcGIS Pro and what it allows for is on the device completely disconnected to optimize the route based upon historic traffic. So when you're in the field, you might also just need a map, right? And that's where Explorer for ArcGIS can come in. Explorer for ArcGIS gives you the ability to view, search, find information. So in this case, we have address information. Right? I have parcel information, right? So embedded in this mobile map package that I built with ArcGIS Pro, I have parcel information. I can get directions with Navigator or Apple Maps or Google Maps, or maybe I just need a compass bearing to where I'm going. So you can see I'm in Charlotte right now. It's a long walk to get down to Panama City from here. But I can also use the data that's in the map to launch Survey123. And typically, we don't have that little hiccup. So let's try it again. I can launch Survey123. It will load the survey and it will populate the parcel identification number with, from the data, completely offline, parcel, my parcel number, my full address, my Panama City Beach City, my zip code, and then I can start using the form to capture damage assessment information. And this workflow was utilized during Hurricane Michael. Um, I had the the privilege of going on site and working with um, Bay County, Florida, and we were able to capture this information really easily. So I can capture a building photo, I can put all my inspector ID information, and then send this, save it, send it later, and have it sync when I have data in the field or get back to a connected state. I also could do a lot of fun things with photos. Because Survey123 has some advanced functionality, I can capture a photo. And this is our conference room here in Esri Charlotte. And then I can mark up the photo with a pencil, right? So I could quickly sketch on the photo right, and say TV and hit done. So sometimes when we capture things with photos, we're not able to um, get all the value out of the photo. But when we're using Survey123, we can do things like mark up the photo, but also get data like the photo date out of the photo that's captured and store it separately in the database. So more on Survey123, we have surveys that can be easily built using a web survey form with the web designer in a drag and drop widget based programming, or we can use Survey123 Connect to build surveys really quickly using XLS forms. And my favorite part about this entire workflow with Survey123 is that we have really rich tutorials within the application to teach you how to get started and then how to advance your surveys once you build the basics. So I got a little ahead of myself and skipped Collector, which I think is the new best app for data collection. So going back to my iPad, 
I want to show you some of the features that I really like in Collector. So this is Collector for ArcGIS, the new version. We also have the formerly known Collector is now known as Collector Classic. So I can capture data quickly. I can use the target area to capture attribute information or to capture a location. You see I have that nice crosshairs, which when you're sweating on your iPad, it makes it really nice to have a very easy way to capture it. I also could pair this with an external GPS. In this version of Collector, we've never been, um, we've been, we've embedded the capabilities to capture and tie into those external receivers from companies like Trimble and EOS um, and Bad Elf. Um, like never before, we're seeing and capturing that their technology and building it into Collector. I can take a photo, I can change the status, and I can put in comments. But one of the things that a lot of people didn't know is in the new version of Collector, I can also scan barcodes. So I have this nice bottle of water here, and I can scan that barcode and update my point and submit. So I can submit that way. But I can also plan and manage my work. So one of the things that you may be asked to do is manage collector in the field. So I'm going to open this web map. And you can see I have this web map. And in my settings, to take collector offline, you need to enable offline mode. And then you can go into manage areas and determine the areas that you're gonna select. So I know where my crews are gonna work. So I've pre-planned their maps and data in advance. The other thing that's nice about it is I can set up reoccurring updates. And what's nice about that is I can change how often that data gets updated in my base data, in my vector data, and my operational data can be updated um, frequently enough that my users have the best data in the field. So by pre-planning my offline workflows areas, I can take the map out in the field. So you see, here's my offline areas map. I can choose to download a new area. So I'm just gonna go and grab Brent's area. It's gonna download it. And now I can open that on my device. It, and it might've failed because it's a live demo. And now I have that offline map, right? So you can see it ends at the extent, but I have all the data that I need to do my work. When you're offline, you also have the ability to sync with AutoSync. So I can set it up so that every 15 minutes it tries to sync my maps so that when my field crews are in the field, they're syncing and capturing data when they get connectivity. So you've seen mobile workflows. You've seen capturing data in the field. We've navigated to where we need to go. But really the important part is all that data is being stored in near real time as it's being synced and can be visualized in things like operations dashboard for ArcGIS. So you can see as data is collected, it's updating this dashboard. We can see and track workloads of our workers. We can see what's being done, what's being completed, what's pending, and really take advantage of WebGIS in the field to take to make more efficient work um, and better work for our users. So another example of a land records dashboard is this value analysis dashboard. Um, it gives you the ability to see and look at neighborhoods, look at appeals and sales, look at ratios. I'm gonna go back out so we can see everything and show really quickly what's going on within your organization. So 
I know we've covered a lot today and there's a lot of different places to start. So one of the things to know is that a lot of the things we did today all started right here with ArcGIS Pro. It started with looking at the map that we're going to put into ArcGIS Online and or in Explorer for ArcGIS. By creating a mobile map package with a locator of my parcel data, I'm able to use my business information to find locations in the field. I can enable anonymous use so that no the user doesn't have to sign into the device. But if it's got my authoritative data, I probably won't don't want to do that. I can also make the map timeout, right? So I can set a message and enable the map to time out after a certain period of time as the data becomes expired. So maybe my, in my case, I want to do it every two weeks, or maybe I want to do it every month. That would notify my user that they have old data and to tell them to go and where to go to get that data by putting in a custom map. I can or a custom message, I can tell them, hey, you need to go to the portal or RTS online, go to your group and see that you have a new map for download and then sync that to your device. One of the things I really like about mobile map packages is their size, right? So in the past, trying to take a whole county's data out in the field, because we're using vector tile base maps, I was able to package this entire mobile map package for Bay County, along with all of their parcel data and all of their address information in under 150 megs, which made it very easy to share in a disconnected environment with users in the field. So to get started and to learn more about these workflows, we've got some really great free training at learn.arcgis.com. And there's a lot of great resources that you can take advantage of to quickly build out these workflows, take advantage of the ability to do all of this great work in the field with your authoritative data and make better decisions from that information. And with that, Brent, I think we're ready for some questions. All right, thanks, Will, that was awesome. The uh, I answered one question that we may want to revisit after we look at a couple here. Uh, regarding the disconnected uh, operations in the field, are you storing clipped copies of aerial into imagery for the individual areas for the appraisers? Um, in this scenario, no. We were not using um, aerial imagery. In, you could choose to use an aerial base map. For the offline white workflows with collector, it would work exactly the same. And by pre-planning it, we could choose the level of detail that we wanted to achieve. Um, but do remember that anytime we're using imagery tile sets um, or raster tile sets, those file sizes can be large. So pre-planning that work in advance makes that process a lot easier. That sounds good. Well, that's it for questions. I'll stay on just a second, see if anybody has any, uh, uh, any additional questions. I think we, uh, okay, here we go. Can I place a date and or time stamp on a photo that I take using collector or survey one, two, three automatically? Or would I have to use markup on each photo? Yeah, so you could use a couple different, so currently there's not a method within the ArcGIS um, mobile applications to burn the date of, from the EXIF so there's a header file of a photo that has a lot of different information in it. Um, in most cases, when captured on the phone, it has a date and time um, and a location, sometimes angles and other information. Um, in that photo, there's not currently a way with our technology to capture it. Um, we do have a um, ideas.arcgis.com 
poll for that where people have upvoted that to get that into the next release cycle. Um, but that being said, there are other methods to do that. There are apps that would allow you to capture a photo um, and have that burnt into it and then attach that to your collector. It adds another piece of complexity. The other thing with Survey123, there is a way to harvest that EXIF data and store it in a field in the database so that you would know this photo was captured at this time. Hopefully that helps it. Okay, we gotta thank you yeah, for that. I, yeah, and I think I can show an example of that. Give me one second and I'll reshare my screen. So in this scenario, um, we can capture a photo. So I'm gonna take another picture of our, our glorious TV here. And by capturing that data, I can choose what I want to see and from the EXIF tag. Um, there's a lot of different things that can be chosen. Um, so right there is my date and time. I can choose GPS. I'm inside, so it's not capturing it um, from the photo. Um, but you can see I can programmatically store that. And what I would do in this scenario is I would store it as a hidden question so that user didn't even know it was just being written to the database. All right. Got another one here. Uh, if you're using Navigator and have a parcel list, what software are you using to create the most efficient route? Ooh, so there's two questions in there. One is uh, making a locator out of your own parcels. And yep. The other is using uh, which navigation app you'd like. Yeah, so that's a great question. So first is um, to achieve, uh, there's a, to achieve that workflow of adding in the, the URL string, and I'll show that again. Um, so to show that URL string in Navigator, um, how it was made, and I just changed my password for my email, so I apologize for the pop-ups. So, yeah, this is this is the one. So what you can see is there's a URL string that calls ArcGIS Navigator, right? And in that URL string, in this scenario, I've put latitude and longitude. In this hyperlink, I've put in um, a URL with the same path, but with parcel, parcel numbers. And how I build that um, is not necessarily the most efficient, but um, I built that with Excel, just using a cat concatenation string, and I could just paste in um, my list and sp spit out that URL. You could also use Python um, to optimize that, um, establishing the stop, start, et cetera. Uh, if we need to clip imagery, what format do you recommend for uploading if we need the entire county extent but detailed Im imagery for a specific area of interest? We tried TPKS, but as you say, files are large. Yeah, so TPK, it, so with imagery, you're always going to be in a TPK. Um, so that's where the offline workflows might give you a little bit better work because it gives you the ability to have imagery at a very tight resolution for a certain area um, and then be able to zoom out um, and use maybe um, an online base map. So when you're connected or have connectivity, um, you could use that online base map with imagery in it um, for those areas. Imagery is a challenge, especially in large geographic counties, counties that cover a large area. Trying to take out a entire county becomes rather difficult. Um, but TPK is, is the format that's going to be used 
um, more often than not. The other, other tool that is helpful with that is a tool called Tile Package Creator. Um, it's a tool from the Esri Labs, and it, it was built by Ishmael Shavite, who is um, also on the uh, the Survey One Two Three team. Yep, and it will allow you uh, to grab tiles from different uh, imagery packages, take them offline, and then sideload them as needed. Um, but using the new collector, I think the best way is to grab and use the offline map workflows um, and just use an image-based map. All right, thanks. And we're just about out of time. Oh, we have one more question. Can I follow up with someone after this webinar? Yes, you may. Uh, you may follow up with me, bjones at every, esri com, or will at wmyers at esri.com. And they'll be happy to take any questions offline that you have uh, and connect you with the, the resources that uh, uh, to help you solve your problems. Okay, well, that's about out of time. I want to thank everyone for your, your attendance. I want to especially thank Will for his time on this. I think it's nice to have an expert on the, uh, on the mobile stuff do the presentation. Uh, and again, follow up with us if you have any additional questions. And we look forward to having you attend our webinar on May 16th. Thanks.